HLF has started in earnest and in today's video we're going to dive into the hot topic of machine learning. We'll be visiting the IMAI exhibition which is just across the square from the HLF. And we'll talk to Bean Kim, research scientist at Google Brain, about her work on machine learning and its challenges. And as well as the fantastic lectures by the laureates and the panel discussions, we've also had a lot of meeting and talking to the young researchers over coffee. Let's go! Let's go! Saloma, you just did the speed networking. What did that involve? So it involved talking to other people, other researchers who are um, here about what you do, learn about what they also do, seek some advice from them if um, you need to, or maybe talk about opportunities that they have that maybe you can also grab. So what did you find most useful about that experience? So I spoke to um, them mostly about my PhD journey because I just started I mean, I'm in my second year and then I needed advice as to how to move faster, things to avoid, the things to do, who to talk to, who not to talk to, some, um, just some general advice on what would help me as a PhD student. So what is your PhD on? Well, I'm working on automated machine learning and applying it to transportation at the University of Deusto. Joseph, you were just doing the speed networking. Can you tell me what that was like? Uh, they made us stand in a great circle and then um, after two minutes, which is a rather short time but necessary if you want to meet many people, we all, each of us rotated one step to the right. So you have two minutes to yeah. explain your area of work. So can you give me a short version of your area of work in a, in a minute or two? I'm looking at standing waves on a sphere, which is, I mean, it's, 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 it's extremely concrete uh, if you compare it to what most mathematicians do. And at the same time, it's incredibly far removed from actual applications. But still, it's a good model case for, for example, many interesting phenomena in quantum mechanics. And that's actually why people got interested in this problem in the first place. What's your name and where do you come from? Uh, hi, I'm uh, Nigel. I'm originally from Goa, India, but I'm doing my PhD uh, in the United States right now, so I'm traveling from Boston. And what's your PhD in? Uh, my PhD is in using machine learning and AI for uh, personalized education. Okay. And what are you most looking forward to about the HLF? Uh, I'm mostly excited to meet great people, learn from uh, eminent scientists as well as uh, interact with my peer group coming from all over the world and make some nice friends. We're now talking to Bean Kim, who is staff research scientist at Google Brain and works on machine learning. And machine learning is, of course, the hot topic at this year's HLF. So, Bean, can you describe to us in a couple of sentences what machine learning is and what it's about? Yeah, sure. So this is actually a tricky question because not everyone agrees what machine learning is or what AI is. But to me, it means a machinery or algorithm that can learn useful things from data. And this machinery tends to be very, very complex. And this complex system sometimes is not understandable by humans like us because it's either too complex or maybe doing things that we, are, we yet to have a concept to describe what it is. And that's what my research is about. So one of the features of machine learning is exactly that, that it's, it can be a bit like a black box. So an algorithm will find an answer to a problem, but we don't necessarily know how it got to that answer. So why is that a problem and what can we do to address that problem? Yeah, it's a great question. Why is this a problem? Machine learning has been and is everywhere around us making decisions as we speak. Some are high stakes, some are low stakes. But especially in high stake decisions, we really want to understand and have to understand the machine, whether the values pursued by machines align with humans. So for example, we humans, it's natural to say, oh, we definitely want to save a person rather than any other values, for example. Now, machines are not necessarily taught explicitly of, of that value. So it's very important and difficult to make sure that machines pursue the same value as us. 
And that's like the core uh, fundamental question of, of my research. Um, how do, what do we do about it? Lots of things. So this is unsolved problem, how to align human values with machines, uh, values, if you call it. And that's part of where my research falls into. So first of all, I think about this as a conversation between humans and machines. So what do I mean? I think it's a part of a language that we are going to develop to make sure machines can tell us what it's doing, why it's doing, when it might fail, and what values it's pursuing in a way that we can understand. And that's the language that we're going to develop as a scientist, together with cognitive scientists, computer scientists, statisticians, mathematicians, all together to have and develop this language so that we can have that conversation. That's what my research is about. How far away are we from having that language? Right now we're in very, very, very infant stage. Uh, I can attest that some of the work that we initially did with this enthusiasm of, okay, we're going to build this language, how can we interpret machine learning? Uh, later down the road, I actually proved that some of the work that I did in the past doesn't work. <laughs> and that's one thing that I continue to do, being really skeptical about what we do as we make these tools, because we're excited, we're humans, we have biases, we fall into our own traps like confirmation bias, making sure that this tool doesn't fall into that and making sure if we have a tool, we need to detect if such things happen. Uh, that's kind of summarizes my last uh, decade of work. And I'm really excited about what we're going to see in years coming forward. I hopefully see uh, in my lifetime that this language will be taught in school or at least have some initial structure of it. We're here across the square from the HLF at the I Am AI exhibition, which is part of the HLF, part of the outreach work here. And I'm here with Antonia May, a research physicist from the University of Edinburgh. Antonia, you work with the group Imaginary to help develop this exhibition. Can you tell us a bit about the Imaginary project? Of course. Uh, so Imaginary started in 2008 and was a exhibition called Imaginary Through the Eyes of Mathematics. Um, since then, it's grown massively. We've had many different exhibitions uh, that traveled around the world. Um, the main thing about it is that it's all open source, so people can contribute and reuse the content, and that's very exciting. And you yourself are a research visitor. You use machine learning and artificial intelligence in your work. Can you tell us how you do that? Sure. So. I'm a computational biophysicist, um, that's quite a mouthful, so um, I actually look at how proteins work and how they interact with small drug molecules and we're trying to learn how, how these interactions work and how we can generate new molecules as medicines. So this is quite an interdisciplinary work, so I was trained as a physicist, I worked in a maths department and now I'm in chemistry at the University of Edinburgh, but the idea really is that we take algorithms and ideas from maths and physics and apply them to chemistry proje uh, projects and problems. The exhibition is quite like a lot of the imaginary exhibitions we've seen. It's very playful. Can you give people a sense of what they'll find when they're here and why it's set up that way? Sure. So our ethos is really about exploring yourself. It's not here's a long table of instructions, follow them, and then you know everything about the exhibit. It's really we actually almost encourage you to break it. So the idea is, can we explain how a neural network works by you just playing around with it and finding out features on your own? Um, we explain how the training algorithms like gradient descent work through a game where you try and find treasure on the seabed of an ocean. Um, but we also look at quite um, serious topics like uh, ethics of AI and what kind of implication that has for our future and how we can regulate uh, this in the future. And we're here with Volker Geibler, who is the head of exhibitions and outreach at the HLF. Volker, can you tell me why this is a good subject for an outreach exhibition, artificial intelligence? <coughs> well. Uh, artificial intelligence is a topic that is so widely you know, discussed. Many people hear about it, but few people have really had a closer look into the details, how it works, 
For many people, it's like a bit like a magical thing, like a black box. And if you hear artificial intelligence, you know, it can do magic tricks. And it's very hard to see really what is inside, how powerful it is, where it is also maybe error prone, where things can go wrong. And so I think this is very important for people to not only hear like artificial intelligence exists, but uh, well, take a closer look. Why is outreach important to the HLF? The outreach part was already beginning important for the HLF from the beginning because for us it was very clear that the HLF itself is a relatively closed event, right? I mean, people need to register for it. It's also very sometimes technically or uh, uh, very uh, possibly difficult topics to the general public. But at the same time, it's very important that computer science and mathematics are actually being brought to the attention of the public. So for us, it was very important that we have to accompany something like this uh, topical event with the HLF, also to some activity that the general audience, any school classes, families, individual people can get in contact with mathematics and computer science and uh, get some personal access to these topics. After another packed day at the HLF, we are here at the Speyer Museum of Technology for dinner. And as important as the scientific program is, it's chances like this to relax and chat and have fun, they're just as crucial. Today's video was all about machine learning. Join us for the next video, which will be all about mathematics. <laughs> Come, Come fly, fly with us! us. Hey. Woo!